160. He's gone. What's up, guys? Welcome back for uh, part two of us working on this boat project. And I bought a few more things, and today we're going to be doing a little bit more general maintenance uh, on the engine because all the interior is stripped out. So you have to buy one of these. Now these are vacuum based uh, oil change systems. The idea is you catheterize your engine, right, and then you pump it, pump it, pump it. And if you can hear, it basically creates a vacuum uh, in here. And this is good for five quarts, which is good for normal V8 size, any cars. In general, I am not a fan of these systems. Uh, I would never recommend using one on a car because you just get a better drain if you use gravity, you get all that gunk out of your system. But on the boat, where the underside of the engine is really inaccessible um, can normally, these systems are, are necessary to do a good job. And uh, we're going to get in the boat here in a second. I'll show you guys how to do all of that. The other thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and change out uh, the oil filter. And this is a giant looking oil filter, but this is just a standard Chevy 350 oil filter. Um, and one of the tricks you want to use with that is you want to get like a gallon Ziploc bag and put it underneath and unscrew the oil filter and let the oil in the oil filter dump into that Ziploc bag and that way you uh, can avoid making a ginormous fucking mess everywhere. So we're going to do that. Um, and then we're going to start disassembling kind of a little bit of the top end electronics uh, here on the engine. Get the relay out of the way, get that fixed so we can have a reliable start. Uh, and just kind of start cleaning everything up, getting all the rusty stuff out as much as we can. So, nothing to do but to get to it, so let's get to it. Now the first step of any oil change is to let your engine warm up. Unfortunately our temperature gauge doesn't really work, so we're going to give it like three or four minutes, five minutes to warm up properly. We'll cut it off. Now what you see here is there's a hose here, and that's feeding water to the engine. Uh, and you have to turn off that valve when you're using this, and turn it on when you're in the water to blow water out the bottom. As you can see, the way it does, it spits the uh, water out the exhaust. Uh, it's just the way boats work. And look at my French drain. It works beautifully. Well, this thing did a good job. Unfortunately, there was only like a quart of oil in there. We got our new Purolator filter chilling down there. And I don't know if you guys can tell on the GoPro, but this thing is so much quieter and so much smoother and then she just purrs like a kitten and guess what when you put oil in the engine you suddenly have oil pressure and if we uh give it a little bit oil pressure works good temp sensor is working i like it the only thing is the fuel gauge is still not working because i know i have like almost a full tank in that bitch now i've traced the problem back to this guy this is a brand new secondary starting relay the slightly annoying thing is that the starting relay on this boat is wedged back up in there. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to grab that or not, but there she is. And so we got to get her out of there. And as you can tell, the bolts are rusted to the point where, well, they're rusted to the point where I can't remove them. So we're probably going to have to remove this entire panel um, and yeah remove this entire panel step one is to unscrew the relays all three screws are really rusty but they somehow managed to come out next we're gonna need to undo this uh, ECU and get it off and these are uh, bolts but they got nuts on the back side so it's not gonna be fun either well after spending about an hour and scratching my head this is where we're at I can't remove this panel because there's a bunch of rusty shit and I just can't get it off and I can't remove the old uh, um, old relay because I can't get the rusty panel off the other issue we're having is the reason that's not working is you can see there's a jumper cable running straight to the negative terminal on the battery is because this rusty piece of shit's not getting enough ground. And so I'm going to have to do something. I still don't know what I'm going to do. But we're going to have to do something to get this into a position where I can actually, like, 
you know, get a good ground, get a good 12 volts. But now, I mean, the start is working, turn it. Well, I got it all out. Uh, basically saved everything except for those little screws that go into that um, fuse right there. Everything's just kind of dangling, chilling. We're basically done for the day. Um, I put all the screws that we had left into the bucket of death. And here is that stupid, shitty, fucking rusted plate. You can see where I had to grind down and cut it off. And, and here is our relay that failed. And you can see both the terminals snapped when I tried to take them off. I mean, this thing is cracked, corroded, basically garbage. Um, so I'm going to see if I can put this in the bucket of death as well. Uh, if not, we're just going to have to wire wheel and, and clean it all up. Uh, and uh, it'll be fine going forward because we got only fresh water here. There we go. Everything's reassembled back here. All new stainless hardware. Had this painted, new relay. Now the boat cranks over, starts up first time. No questions. So we can move on to something else. Okay, next little project we gotta take is these side panels that hold the speakers. This is what's left of the old speakers. Um, not a whole lot. So we bought some of these Kenwood six and a half. Um, these are about $20 a pair. They have really good reviews on uh, Amazon and for 40 bucks for all four new speakers, I couldn't really complain too much. Hopefully they sound pretty decent. They look like they're fairly good quality. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up all this vinyl and get our new speakers mounted in here and get this back all into the boat. Um, a few points. Marine speakers versus non-marine speakers. Marine speakers are super expensive. Uh, the cheapest marine speakers you can get are going to be like close to 100 bucks, And they sound like shit because they're cheap ass fucking speakers that have gone through a marine certification. And so I would rather spend $40 on four speakers rather than 200 on four speakers. Have my speakers sound better. And you know what? If they rust out or wear out in two or three seasons, fuck it. Spend another $40, get some new speakers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up uh, this vinyl and what we're going to use is this stuff, it's called Starbright. Works really well at uh, cleaning up vinyl, kind of get a little bit more suppleness back into it. And then we just mount our speakers. Thankfully this is easier than any car because these things pop right out. We just screw the speakers in and then we'll do the wiring connections in the, uh, in the boat. And that's all there really is to it. These speakers come with screws and a set of wires, and we're going to solder these into the boat uh, in a minute. <clears throat> First, we got to see how they're going to uh, fit in here. So, thankfully, it appears the old speakers were six and a halves too, so the new speakers fit perfectly in here. So, all we got to do is just get the impact and uh, screw these bad boys in. And you know, a lot of times, you know, since these had the same size speakers, the old speaker holes are still here. Well, went through and cleaned everything. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner than it used to be. Probably give it one more good scrub before I put the interior back in. But there's our speakers. All mounted up. Sound pretty good. Can't complain. Um, but yeah. It's already looking much, much cleaner, much better. 